The fundraising portion of the gala was over. The dinner and the dessert had been served and eaten. The auctions were over, the entertainers had performed, and a lot of money had been raised for the Maybe Gare Museum. And then there was a surprise announcement. At least it was a surprise to me as someone who often forgets to read the fine print. Now, everyone was invited to adjourn to the side of the banquet hall for dancing and a DJ and karaoke. I would have had a song ready had I known. And suddenly the lights went down and the spotlights drew all of our eyes to a dance floor and music started playing loudly. And there was that feeling of awkwardness like you're back in high school and no one knows who's gonna walk onto the dance floor first. Who's gonna do that with 300 people watching them? And then something happened that was a bigger surprise than the DJ, the dancing, or karaoke. A couple suddenly arrived on the dance floor. And they were clearly not afraid to show off their dancing skills. There was an older gentleman, and that's why this is shocking, but he had some amazing break dancing skills. <laughs> he was doing the pop and lock and the robot. The amazing thing was that the woman who was dancing with him was keeping up with him. She wasn't break dancing, but she was smiling. She was full of grace and confidence. She looked like she was having the time of her life and that she knew what she was doing. And I thought, I guess the museum paid some ringers. <laughs> and who's gonna wanna get on the floor and dance after that? Well, I happened to be standing close to Jack and Tiffany Barrett. And that's when I heard Jack say, what in the world is going on? But Jack did not say world. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tiffany said, I have known that woman since 1983 and I've never known her to dance and certainly not dance like that. <laughs> that's when I thought, I should actually see what's happening. So I pulled my glasses off my head and over my eyes and I realized, despite the fact that she's retired, despite the fact that I've prayed with her before two total knee surgeries, Nancy Reese Barrett can dance. <laughs> and it took a few minutes before other people had the courage to step on the dance floor. No one wanted to follow that. And later I asked Nancy, did you know the whole town was watching you? And she just laughed, didn't bother her at all. And then I said, who was that guy you were dancing with? And she said, I have no idea. <laughs> she said, I was sitting in my chair, the announcement started, the music came on, and he walked by my chair and just looked at me and said, are you scared? And I said, I'm not scared of anything. And he said, well, come on then. So I did. Well, here's another story. The wedding was just around the corner and her family had been saving and planning and preparing for it for, their, for her entire life. They would feed as many people as they could afford to feed. The food and the celebration would last a few days, hopefully, maybe as long as a week if they could get enough food and drink together. And their family honor depended on it going well. And their family mattered. They were of the tribe of David. They were not rich people, but they had a rich history to be proud of. And everyone she had known her entire life, her close family, her extended family, her rabbi, the people she grew up with, the whole village would be watching. 
and her family had arranged the match. And everything she knew about Joseph told her he was a good man and he cared about her very much. And she was nervous to be the center of attention, to have all eyes on her, but she was ready. She thought that this would be the most important moment of her life. But everything changed when light filled her room and she heard the music. Well, it wasn't really light as we know light, and it wasn't really music, but those are the only words she could describe it with. And there would be no food and wine. There would be no celebration with the village. There would be no wedding, at least not right away. There would be Joseph and Mary leaving during the night. There would be dishonor and rumors that she would hear the rest of her life. There would be childbirth in a place meant for animals. There would be immense and incredible pain as she watched her miraculous son, rejected by his people, left alone by his friends, as she stood alone at the foot of his cross watching him die. But there would also be incredible joy beyond our comprehension. And there would be peace that passes understanding. And Mary's departure from the life that she was planning for and the life that we are still talking about 2,000 years later began with three words. Let it be. Let it be to me as you have said. And Mary wasn't naive. If she was like most children raised in third world countries, she had already known more death, days of hunger, and suffering than most of us will experience in a lifetime. The thing that made Mary able to say, let it be, was faith. And for early Christians, Mary was the model of faith and faithfulness. And I used to think faith was all about what I believed. I was taught that I needed to make my faith my own. And so faith became for me a, a list of personal rules and convictions and answers. And I thought that the opposite of faith was doubt. And I think that much of the Christian world, especially here in the Bible Belt, operates with that view of faith. We don't really know what faith is. I think everything I've described is actually the opposite of faith. First of all, it's not a personal list. Mary's thought was never for herself, but for others first. She was an ancient Jew. She thought about family and tribe first. It just came naturally to her. Faith was and is communal in her way of thinking about it. That's why when we say the creed in a few moments, we're going to say, we believe. Because half of the people who show up here on Sunday mornings have trouble with some parts of it. They're not sure if they believe that or comprehend it well enough to say it out loud. But that's what community is all about. When you're struggling, I can hold you up. And when I'm struggling, you can hold me up. It's our statement, not my statement. And second, the word rule and the word faith don't really fit well together. If you have a lot of rules, you don't need faith. And the same is true of the word answer. If you have the answers, you don't need faith. So what is faith? Faith is what you are left with when you don't have the answer. Faith is what you do when you don't know what to do, but you have to make a choice. And the opposite of faith is not doubt, but fear and certainty. 
In fact, just as you can't have courage without fear, you can't have faith without doubt. Faith is what you're left with when you're full of doubt and you still choose to act. I sometimes have people in the community or people in our parish come to me and lament their lack of faith. And these people are generally the first ones to show up to feed the hungry. They're the first ones to show up when somebody in the parish needs help. And they're the ones who care the most for the last, the lost, and the least. So in other words, the faith that we see in Mary, when you have to respond, when you don't know, and you know only pain might be ahead of you, the faith that we see in Mary tells us that those people who act despite doubts don't have the least faith, they have the most. So on this Christmas Eve, the message is very simple. Bad things happen in life. Sickness, divorce, injury, the loss of our nearest and our dearest. And if you retreat, if you stay off the dance floor, you put up enough walls, you might avoid some pain and some loss. You'll, you'll survive. But if you retreat, you'll also miss the good things. You see, life is a gift from our Creator that's meant to be lived and lived to the full. And not by pursuing pleasure, but by living the faith we see in Mary, who loved her neighbor as herself and who put others before herself. Life like this can't be put into a container and controlled. And the difference between sitting safely on the sidelines, protected from harm, embarrassment, and shame, and walking out into the lights is one thing. Let it be to me as you have said. Here is the thing. God can really dance. He can do the pop and lock. He can break dance with the best of them. And God's hand is out to you with one question. Are you afraid?